The most commonly seen and referenced battle armor in human history from the past 150 years is the original Clan Elemental. This flexible and remarkably advanced piece of technology allowed a person the opportunity to carry the weapon necessary to directly challenge a mech on the battlefield. This demonstration of power was not lost on those who used them and the targets of their fury. In the years since 3049, both the clans and the Inner Sphere have taken the concept of the armored soldier and run with it, creating a wide range of different battle armor concepts to suit the various tactical requirements of the day. Today, we highlight a few that I think are either a unique take on battle armor or that jumped out as possible game changers on the battlefield. Our first example is more of an augmented personal power armor than the traditional battle armor. The Hurricane is an experimental Comstar design which offers the augmentation one would expect to boost strength and preserve stamina, while also being a platform for a powerful piece of weaponry. In the decades following the clan invasion, Comstar spared no expense in developing advanced designs that incorporated clan technology. The Hurricane is a good example of the results of these efforts. Weighing in at 400 kilograms, the Hurricane is built around two systems. The first is Clan Stealth Armor. Keeping a low profile and limiting your electronic signatures is crucially important for survival in the modern battlefield. The Hurricane can operate through and behind enemy lines and do so while remaining a potent threat to whatever the user finds. That's where the second key system comes into play. The Clan Anti-Personnel Gauss Rifle takes up half of the Hurricane's weight and from all accounts it's worth every kilogram. This scaled down version of the Gauss Rifle packs a devastating punch against infantry, battle armor, and even light vehicles. The weapon fires a series of small projectiles at supersonic speeds. The weapon's impressive range also allows the user to hit targets from distances usually reserved for vehicles and battle mechs. More than a few Word of Blake officers shuffled the mortal coil while thinking they were safely behind the front lines. The AP Goss is located on the Hurricane's arm on a designated arm mount so that the soldier doesn't have to bear the weight. The suit itself is designed to improve mobility, Though not equipped with jump jets, the armor can move at a consistent and rapid pace. Had the suit gone into full production, it would have been an incredible force multiplier for Comstar, and possibly even changed the outcome of history. Unfortunately, the use of clan stealth armor and the AP Gauss rifle guaranteed the production would be incredibly limited. Even with Comstar's considerable clout and reach across the inner sphere, procuring clan technology for production runs at scale was simply impossible. Any existing Hurricane suits beyond the Word of Blake kerfuffle years would be incredibly rare and valuable, to the point that they would really only be used in the most dire of circumstances. However, this rarity just makes me want to see them function on the battlefield even more. Our next interesting example of battle armor is the Kukulin Support Armor. Manufactured by Ark Royal Mechworks, this heavy class battle armor weighs in at a massive 1500 kilograms, while other battle armor is designed to improve mobility, the Kukulin's singular mission is to provide a single soldier with the ability to bring a mech-scaled weapon onto the battlefield and keep them alive long enough to use it. Conceived in a joint venture between Clan Wolf and Exile and the Kelhounds, it was hoped that the Kukulin could go into production and be distributed to units in order to meet the resurgent threat of Clan Jade Falcon. Planners saw great use for a comparatively inexpensive armored infantry unit that could be placed onto the battlefield to amplify the force of existing infantry. Jade Falcon mech warriors would be in for a rude surprise when they ignored infantry in their typically aggressive tactics, only to be ripped apart by concentrated fire. The Ku Kulin was intended to be deployed as a piecemeal direct fire support unit within other battle armor squads. Its primary weapon, an ER medium pulse laser, takes up 40% of the battle armor's weight but packs an incredible punch against infantry, vehicles, and even battle mechs. The downside is that while carrying the laser, the Ku Kulin's mobility is significantly limited. Moving at only 11 kilometers per hour suggests it's unlikely this battle armor would be often seen in mobile assault units. On the bright side, the weapon is detachable so that if the position is overrun and the soldier needs to make a tactical retreat, dropping the weapon improves the movement of the Ku Kulin to nearly 22 kph. Reports from the field show that the Ku Kulin was successful operating on the edge of engagements while lighter battle armor and infantry moved in and engaged the larger target. Consistent and accurate fire from the ER medium pulse laser can be devastating. The Kelhounds deployed a significant number of Ku Kulin on Tim Kavichi 
which aided in turning the Jade Falcon and Clan Hell's Horse assault on the planet into a quagmire. Tragically, Malvina Hazen resorted to orbital bombardment to complete the conquest, which destroyed most of the Kelhounds there planetside. Elsewhere, the Kukulin can be found in mercenary units, Clan Wolf in Exile, and the Lyran Commonwealth Armed Forces. The battle armor's value was proven when Clan Wolf invaded Lyran worlds and captured examples of the suits. Instead of being scrapped, the Kukulin were incorporated into some Clan Wolf mixed arm units and elemental trinaries. The Ku Kulin has seen action across the Inner Sphere. During Operation Hammerfall, a contingent of the 4th Royal Guards from the Lyran Commonwealth used the battle armor in tandem with Fenrir II's to set up an ambush across a ridgeline overlooking a vital tunnel outside of Warsaw. The resulting firefight was devastating for the retreating Tamarind militia and led to a complete rout. Less successfully, the Ku Kulin was used in the defense of Tropicana during the invasion of Tharkad by the Jade Falcons in 3143. The 12th Arcturian Guards set up defensive lines using the battle armor as a support unit within buildings of a city. Lying in wait, they intended to ambush Jade Falcon mechs as they entered the tight urban space. Unfortunately, or fortunately if you're a Jade Falcon fan, the Falcon commander recognized the possible threat and sent in assault mechs which were able to tank the incoming fire and wipe out the ambushers who were unable to escape. While obviously an example of specialization and risk versus reward, the Kukulin is an interesting take on battle armor. There's clearly a need for fire support beyond what is typically found in a standard battle armor package, so if you're looking for supplements to your forces, the Kukulin could be a viable option. Our next battle armor design of note is one that I found myself warming to more and more after discovering it in the 3145 House Corita technical readout. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I know you were waiting for it. I bring you the one, the only, Oni Battlesuit. I ask that you reserve your judgment on this medium battle armor. I know it looks like it's stared into the Ark of the Covenant, but I think it has something to offer the battlefield commander. With a max possible weight of 1,000 kilograms and a modular mount system on its right arm, the Oni provides a flexible platform for a variety of situations. Plus, if you're a parent, you'll recognize the face as what you get when you tell a three-year-old that it's time to put toys away and get ready for bed. Good times. The Oni was designed by Luthien Armor Works and has seen full-scale production for distribution across combined space. Typically, the battle armor is found within DCMS garrison units that lack the political clout to procure other, more popular designs. Now, it's important to note here that the Oni has a pretty negative reputation in the Combine, but for reasons other than its battlefield performance, which has, by most accounts, been top-notch. In a warrior culture like the Draconis Combine, appearances matter, and when your battle armor looks like it fell into a vat at the Gotham Makeup Factory, it's going to have an impact. Okay, I'm done. Let's get back to it. Okay, just one more. It looks like you put your G.I. Joe into a waffle maker. Okay, actually done. Designed as a jack-of-all-trades battle armor, the Oni excels at nothing, but is really good at most things. Its movement and protection is typical for a medium armor design, but the variety of possible weapon systems is where the Oni has a lot to offer. On the right arm weapon mount, the Oni can carry a support PPC, medium recoilless rifle, a bear hunter super heavy autocannon, or a compact narc missile beacon with four shots. As standard gear, it also has an ECM suite and an extended life support system. Both of these make the Oni a much more survivable unit. If your electronic signature is muted, you're going to be able to put more fire on target for longer. If you do get hit, that extended life support system is going to help keep you in the fight for all but the most devastating of wounds. So at least you'll only look like the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man mid-melting on the outside rather than feel like it on the inside. The variety of weapons options is tantalizing for units that consist of only Onis. Now there is a little caveat that often the DCMS commanders on the receiving end of these units pretty much get whatever they get from off the dropship. Otherwise, they're on their own to jerry-rig alternatives. It reminds me of that old line about the Ford Model T being available in a wide range of colors so long as you want it in black. The battlefield reports on the Oni have been favorable, and the data shows that the battle armor is doing a good job of keeping soldiers alive and in the fight longer than standard infantry. It has been a solid defense line unit that required significant expenditures of time, ammunition, and manpower to defeat. While the suit remained unpopular, the data showed that it was a success, so the production was continued. 
The Oni suit can be found across the Combine and Karasin units, with a heavy concentration in the new Samarkand and Dieron military districts. Affordable, reliable, and comparatively powerful, the Oni battle armor has allowed a shift in other units away from these interior districts where they are needed. In one of the more notable engagements, when they weren't busy modeling for Halloween costumes, the Oni performed well at Misery in 3139. Three squads of Oni-equipped soldiers were assigned to protect a field gun artillery unit in place as part of a larger offensive intended to goad the 10th Avalon Hussars into a kill box. The Davion forces didn't cooperate and instead tried to break out through the field gun position. The Oni reacted quickly, falling into a defensive curve around the field guns and held the line against Davion battle mechs. It bought time for the field guns to rain down fire on the Hussars which eventually diverted them into additional Combine forces. The future of the Ani looks bright as a general use battle armor, even if it does look like it fell out of the ugly tree and hit every branch on the way down. Our next example of newer battle armor comes to us from Clan Ghost Bear and the Rosselhog Dominion. The medium weight Callisto battle armor is another example of a flexible platform that provides good protection for the user and a wide variety of loadouts depending upon the needs of the battlefield commander. The Callisto was the unfinished project of Galaxy Commander Ramiel Warbear Becker, who was forced to abandon it when Alaric Ward claimed Becker as a bondsman. Dominion engineers were left with the daunting task of completing the project and starting production while Alaric used Becker on Clan Wolf's drive toward Terra. The end result was a shockingly effective piece of military hardware that also looks sleek and menacing at the same time. As an added benefit to their thievery of talent from the other clans, Clan Wolf also received Becker's not-quite-finished plans and came up with their own version, which is functionally the same as the Dominion's. Fans of the original Elemental Battle Armor design will instantly note some similarities in the design of the Callisto. It was a deliberate design choice to piggyback off of both the love that the clan warriors have for the original design, as well as the dangerous reputation amongst those who were ever on the receiving end of the Elemental's wrath. It also made for an easier transition for elementals to adapt to this newer armor. The major differences start to show in the choice to upgrade ground movement and the weaponry at the cost of removing jump jet capability. For fans of the original elemental, that's a significant cost as jump jets end up being the primary mode of transportation for elementals not riding on the back of an Omnimech. Thankfully, the Callisto can move at roughly 32 kph over ground. As we've seen with a few of our previous battle armor entries, the primary draw of the Callisto, besides being beautiful, is the modular weapon system. As with Clan Omnimax, the Callisto can be tailored to the needs of a mission or campaign. There are two primary configurations, each with some choice baked in. The A config of the Callisto has an ER medium laser on the shoulder mount, and on the right arm it can carry a Bear Hunter Super Heavy Autocannon, an ER micro laser, or a heavy machine gun. The B config has an ER small laser in the right arm and either a medium recoilless rifle or an SRM-4 on the shoulder mount. With five possible loadouts, battlefield commanders and elementals inside have an opportunity to custom tailor their suit. All of them also include a standardized battle claw in the left hand for general use, gripping mechs, or tearing mech warriors out of their cockpits. Whatever you feel like doing that day. The Callisto can be found across the Rosselhog Dominion, the Clan Wolf Occupation Zone, and increasingly outside both of them as Clan Seafox is now producing the unit. It's likely just a matter of time before this battle armor is available for sale on the open and gray markets. Battle reports from Clan Wolf and the Rasselhog Dominion have been incredibly positive. In the Clan Wolf assault on Marcus, elementals in Callisto battle armor completely routed infantry brigades. The Dominion invasion of the Draconis Combine world of Lembrecht in 3150 showed that the Callisto suits could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Combine battle armor and even battle mechs. While it remains to be seen if the Callisto will completely replace the original elemental battle armor within the Rosselhog Dominion, Clan Wolf, and Clan Seafox, it's very likely that we'll be seeing at least mixed stars. The prospect of a combined arms force that meshes the jumping ability of the original elemental alongside the firepower of the Callisto is tantalizing. We're going to wrap this one up with a little caveat that there will be likely another battle armor video in the near future. There are a lot of really interesting designs and downright insane ones out there, and not very many people know about them. In fact, I posted the artwork of the Callisto on Twitter the other day, and many people had no idea what it was. This needs to change. 
Thank you, as always, for giving the video a go. I think it's really important to keep pushing out of our comfort zones concerning time periods for Battletech. There's a lot of really cool stuff out there in the lore and for tabletop units if we're willing to be adventurous. Big thanks to the channel subscribers. Your support has been incredible, and every penny goes to keeping the nonsense spigot open. Kofi, you know you're awesome as well. You're great. I really appreciate it. Take care. Until we meet again, go out and make the world a slightly better place today and tomorrow.